going to make any adjustments? Or is he just going to back his bowler? Is he going to slow it down? This is a huge moment in one man's great career. Well, and he's done it. And he's done it in grand style with a boundary. Well done, Glenn McGrath. First ever half century in Test cricket. That is just magnificent. I think that behind the smiles there might even be just a tear or two there too. Just fantastic. The longest ovation for a 50 in the history of the game. There's uh, one who'll stay around there. He's very difficult to get out. He does the right thing by the batsman at the other end. In this case, it was the number 11 he was doing the right thing by. And there is the magic moment. First half century in Test Match Cricket. And uh, a proud moment for him walking off the Gabba last night. Well, with all those batting heroics yesterday, we do need to speak to some of the heroes. And uh, Ian Healy, we've sent him downstairs. Our instruction being, don't come back upstairs without giving us a masterclass of batting. What's he got? Over there, well, you and this and that. <laughs> it's obviously a pretty good, uh, pretty good batting day for you today, but uh, you're going to be the subject of a batting masterclass. Today's masterclass is shots all round the wicket. <laughs> and, uh, how did it feel, Glenn, when you're walking out to bat yesterday? Did, did you know something special was on? Just another day at the office, yeah. You know, just uh, <laughs> going out there. I, I was happy Dizzy was at the other end because uh, you know he generally hangs around. My previous top scores have been with Jason, so uh, I was feeling pretty confident. Now, Dizzy, you haven't got a Test match 50 yet. It's right. up to him to support you now. Yeah, it is. It's, it's about time he uh, returns a favour. Uh, other teammates let me down in the past, and so I'm hoping that Glenn can hang around and. Uh, and hopefully it don't take too long. Hopefully I can get there by lunch. <laughs> now, if, you guys, you guys aren't really known for your deep thinking, but it's all about thinking when you're batting, Glenn, isn't it? And uh, apparently you were very keen not to sweep. Um, I, to be honest, I've never known a batsman to actually think. But um, I, was, I was telling myself not to sweep and not to pull. And as soon as I saw the ball where it was, it was I couldn't control it. Actually, it was quite funny here. It was because between, between overs, Glenn kept saying to me, Dizzy, I'm not going to sweep, I'm not going to sweep, I'm not going to pull. And the first ball, uh, as soon as he faced was he's sweeping and pulling. So it was, it was quite funny out there. A bit of new equipment too, Pidge. Uh, have you ever had a new bat before? Yeah, uh, about uh, six years ago. So I thought it was about time to upgrade, come back from India. I'd, uh, yeah, I think I'd used all my runs up in the bat and need a new one, and there's plenty in this one. <laughs> Steve Waugh was well known as a, a quote in the World Cup when Herschel Gibbs dropped that famous catch. Did you mention it to Mark Richardson yesterday? That could be the Trans-Tasman Cup you've just dropped, pal? Uh, not quite that. I did thank him and said, I owe you one. He said, uh, you can buy me a beer after the game. I think it's changed to a, a keg or a or a couple of cartons, but we'll see how we go. Did anyone in the room think that uh, we were going to we were going to uh, damage New Zealand when that catch went down? Did we say they're going <laughs> to they they are going to pay for that? Was the quote? Would, would it be? Well, well, Glenn and I were talking, and uh, we did say let's make them pay now, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and I think we've gone gone part way towards that. Now, Dizzy, what about you, mate? I've I've dubbed you the occupator. 50 balls is the average time you spend at the crease, and now you're starting to make some runs with it. Feeling good? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, yeah, probably about time I started actually score some runs out there. Um, if you remember my off drive off Jacob Orham yesterday, I think you should probably mention that in master class <laughs> and the driving. Uh, <laughs> right. Very difficult combination to bowl to, yeah, uh, McGrath and Gillespie. Uh, you know, you're almost like right and left handers. Yeah, well, as Glenn mentioned yesterday, he, uh, he, he talked about that. You know, I was only playing offside, and he was, uh, I think he had a wagon uh, semicircle instead of the wagon wheel. I don't think he scored on the offside. So, uh, yeah, as Glenn mentioned, yeah, right and left hand combination. So, very difficult to bowl at. What about the plans, what about the plans for today, Pitch? Uh, you've got the full day to bat and, and tomorrow to bowl. Is that it? Yeah, sounds good. You know, uh, plenty of runs left in us out there. Um, and then knock them over. So it'd be nice to get a day off. These conditions haven't been easy. How did you cope? 
I didn't think it was that tough out there. I don't want the batsman carrying on about. All the best, boys. Keep it going. Thanks, Thanks Cheers, Cheers, mate. A very valuable masterclass on how to think and how to play the right shots. Uh, a great effort from Ian Healy there in the Australian dressing room with a couple of yesterday's heroes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, brilliant. Well, uh, Glenn McGrath, in all seriousness, we, we did witness a, a great day for, for him personally, and, and I think for us, just to be sitting there thinking, no, this isn't going to happen, is it? <laughs> but it actually did, and here at the Cricket Show, we thought, well, we should be paying tribute to him, as his teammates did, and also Glenn himself. Morning, a fascinating last hour of cricket, wasn't it? Mate, uh, it was amazing. We uh, had all the zinc cream on, and you usually wait till he walks out the door before you put your whites on, McGrath. But uh, we waited for him out the door, put the whites on. We all sort of sat down because we thought it'll only last a couple of overs. Glenn McGrath would love it. Compelling personal stories from the battlefield. He might have one or two of his own in the cricket field this afternoon, whether it'll be a, a test match 50 or maybe a quick bowl at the New Zealanders. Two or three quick wickets tonight. Whatever it is, the crowd are ready. Oh, and uh, that's pulled away in the air. It's going to be out caught, though. Oh, he's lost it. Pidgey, everything went to plan. Yeah, even uh, I think I owe uh, Richo a, a beer after the game for putting that one down. But, uh, yeah, one of those things. Turning point, maybe that sweep shot. What was going through your mind? Six over mid-wicket? Um, yeah, it was just uh, they hadn't put anyone back there, so I thought if you toss this up, I'm going it. And uh, actually hit one in the middle, so I was pretty happy. Glenn McGrath this time, a real biggie over mid-wicket. Boy, how will McGrath enjoy that. Well, Gilly, you were the only man that was in the viewing room early in his innings. Did you know something special was on? I was backing him all the way. Although I had my hands all taped up, ready to go out and keep, but not needed. But that is the funniest hour and a half screen I've ever seen. I think it was actually 3.39. I looked up at the clock and Darren Lehman walked into the dressing room and said uh, he felt that we should bring him in. But Gilly and I had a bit of faith in the, those two out there. And an hour and a half later, and 90 runs, have done a pretty good job. Grow is not side playing, gets four more over the top. He's playing that to a hook shot, a pull shot, brilliant. Well, he's definitely going for it, and he's hit a big one. Well, he's done it, and he's done it in grand style with a boundary. Well done, Glenn McGrath, first ever half century in Test cricket. Well, Diz, you were out there for the big moment. How pumped was he? It, it was pretty pumped. Didn't know quite what to do. <laughs> haven't been, uh, you know, haven't been out in the middle when you know people make milestones too often. So yeah, it was sort of humming and ahhing. I ended up giving him a hug. He, I think he deserved it. Well, Clarky, how good was that? It was unbelievable. Um, that's close to the best thing I've ever seen in cricket. Uh, you know, Pidgey's worked so hard on his batting in the nets, and, and he honestly deserved to score 50. I'm sure uh, Mark will be sitting at home, probably not with a smile on his face. And hopefully this time Mark will actually pay up. I had a bet with him in 1997 for $1,000 that Pigeon will get a first-class 50. He refused to pay when there was lob-ups. I think it was Worcestershire versus Knotts, and I bought lob-ups and Pigeon got 50. So I'm, I've already been on the phone to him, and he's had his phone off. So hopefully he gets the message, and uh, I'll be able to speak to him. We might have a ceremony of handing the cash over. Did you have any inkling that he was onto it? Uh, as Clark had said, he had all new gear, and he put a lot of love into the pads and taping them up the right way and cutting off a few logos that aren't allowed on there but he, he made the comment he came in he's got Michael Bevan's name on, on the sticker on his bat he just announced that Michael Bevan will now be using a Glenn McGrath bat. Well Wolf how were the rooms when that debacle was happening? Pretty excited for the pest yeah we're pretty happy for him. <laughs> he's going to be particularly pesky from now on I reckon. He will be he's throwing things around he's already, already calling himself Bradman so we're a bit worried about that. <laughs> uh, no inkling no big statements prior to the innings? No, we saw him net this morning. It was the worst net you've ever seen, so we're, we're pretty surprised he got that many. What a remarkable day's play has ended with Jason Gillespie on 43 and Glenn McGrath with his first test half century. Did you know that you're in good form or did you feel good? Yeah, I felt good. You know, in India I've been playing the quicks pretty well and feeling pretty comfortable in the net, so it's just a matter of time. Yeah, the Australian cricket team's greatest pest brings up his first uh, test half century. Will he get a second? 
I think he might because he's talented. We we know how he can hit oh, flies in mid air. He can pick you off with a grape from anywhere. Uh, so he's got all these skills that he's practiced for, you know, years upon years. So I think now with a little bit of confidence, uh, he he can do another one for sure. His wagon wheel was uh, was interesting. Basically on the offside in front of point, he did not score a run. No, and that's quite normal. Uh, in the nets, as... Well, you, you just said he was talented. <laughs> yeah, he's very talented. Very talented on the leg side. <laughs> Hopeless on the offside. But he's used to just picking them out of the back of the net. So he either nicks them or runs them down to third man, picks them out of the back of the net. And he was able to do it in a game today. I like the fact that he said, Matthew Hayden averages 55. I average 7. All right, so in relation to Matthew Hayden, this 50 is like me scoring 450. And uh, I think he's, he's drawing a long bow there. You've played a lot of cricket with him. Uh, watching on the telly, he takes things so seriously you know, with the batting. He, he obviously takes great pride in trying to achieve something at number 11. Oh, certainly. And while he's been out with his injuries in the last 10 months, he's worked on his batting. So my, his batting's probably improved. Uh, he does hit them well in the nets at times. And everyone sort of thinks, you know, he, he, there's runs there some, somewhere for sure. Uh, and now he might have found them. Well, good work there, Heels, uh, catching up with Australia's new batting sensation in Glen McGrath. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen here? I think they're going to continue to use the pitch really well. The quicks are bowling well, and now Warney's got a wicket. That's exactly what New Zealand didn't want to happen, and uh, Warney will be hard to get on top of. The quicks will operate down breeze into that cross crack that's, uh, that's appeared on the pitch. So uh, I think New Zealand are in for a tough, torrid afternoon and possibly could be over today. Thanks for your time today. Pleasure. More Cree Choke right after this break.